React server components seem to be all the rage these days. Many people are talking about them and I feel like they are often misunderstood. They have been the cornerstone of some very heated debates and the word co-location is often being thrown around in the context of React server components. Why is that? And why are they a great fit for the React ecosystem? So there are two things that server components do really well that was never traditionally possible in client components like React usually was. First off, they allow you direct interaction with your database. And that's a huge advantage because you can co-locate your concerns into one file, which means that wherever you need the data, you can make the request to your database in that same file, increasing A, maintainability, and B, code readability. After all, it makes it super easy to debug. You know where you're fetching the data, you can log it out if there's anything wrong with it. That's precisely what I did in my past open source projects, and it has worked super well for me. The way you do that in client components is have a fetch request on the client side that makes a request to an API route you defined in which you make the database query and then return the data. So that has been thoroughly simplified with the server component architecture. But they haven't been staying without criticism. In fact, in the original demo that React has released in 2020, first introducing them to React, they were quite clunky in that, for example, you define a component by having the file extension as .server, .js, or .client.js, which I don't understand being listed as a pain point, because for example, in modern Next.js, that's definitely not the case anymore. In fact, files that you make in Next.js are by default server components encouraging best practices and encouraging small client bundles by not shipping additional packages that you only need to rely on on the server across to the client. You can actually verify that in your own React apps. If you check what Webpack gives you in the client bundle, then you won't find any files that have been marked as server components. And it's also super interesting to look at the differences between how data was passed in Next.js 12, traditional server-side rendered components, and then these new React server components that are by default implemented into Next.js 13. Check this out. There's two open pages. The left one is the traditional Next.js 12 approach, and then the right hand side of this tab right here displays how we do it with React server components. However, first let's look at the traditional Next.js 12 approach of data fetching. If we take a look at the local host file, the main file that is being transferred, we can see right here in the very bottom, there's the HTML response that we get back from the server. This is a get static props function that we're using and you can see all the HTML that is being sent back to the user, including the name of the person that we display right here, which is dynamically fetched right here inside our get server props and then pass to the component as a property. However, if we take a look at the main difference between Next.js 12, the traditional approach, and then the React server components, it's in the sources. And then if we navigate to the index page right here, we can see, and if I make this just a bit larger for you, we can see where the data is being rendered. And that would be right here where it says ID underscore next, and then the John name is being rendered. However, the way we pass data is fundamentally different. If you take a look at this script tag right here, in here, we can see the JSON string of the data that we are transferring from the server to the client, and then we're getting it through this script. In Next.js 13, that is different. If we reload the page, the initial response from the, from the sub page is the same. We can see the response, it's a long ass HTML string. We don't care about that. But if we navigate into the, into the source folder and then look at the source of the sub page, in here you won't be able to see the same data fetching approach that you just saw. Instead, we can see the main div right here, John, but where is the script containing the data. It's way at the bottom, right down here in the last script tag on the page. If I go a bit to the right, you can see there's the, oh, that was too far. You can see there's the div that we used to render out the name, then null, and then the children. So this is a React element that we're rendering on the page, but it's down here in the script tag and we are pushing it into some sort of array. Now, what the hell is that? That's not HTML like in Next.js 12, but rather some weird kind of Next.js JavaScript thing that they use to put the information 
into the component so in the end the user can see the normal information. But the way Next.js 12 goes about that and Next.js 13 goes about that is quite different and Next.js 13 after all just represents the normal React server component architecture. And what this Next.js internal JavaScript syntax entails are larger network exchanges. In fact, the code you just saw was about four kilobytes large, whereas with a regular fetch, you would never reach something of that size. And that might sound pretty bad at first, if you don't consider that yes, these are large exchanges in the network, but what they allow you to do is not ship NPM packages to the client at all, saving you many more kilobytes, even though yes, the network exchanges are much larger than a regular fetch request would be. A big question with client components was also, where the hell do I fetch my information? So I A, have good performance in my components and B, I only fetch the information that I need to. With server components, that problem has been fully alleviated with something called deduping, a caching mechanism to prevent multiple requests of the same data from your backend. You make the request once it's been cached and whenever you make the request again, that data is drawn from cache, essentially preventing multiple requests from happening. And if you ask me, that's a pretty smooth solution if you want A, a good user experience and then B, good React component performance. In the end, one concern still stands and that is, won't server components make the deployment of my app more complex. After all, instead of just relying on the client for rendering the components, for hydration and everything else, like in traditional React without server components, with server components, we have to rely on a server somewhere, right? Doesn't that make the deployment harder? And the answer is yes, it does. That's a good point and a very valid concern because the server that's gonna feed the data to your users needs to be somewhere. Other than that though, my experience has been fairly positive with server components. The co-location of concerns makes it a very enjoyable experience for me. Again, that does not mean you can't modularize your code, you still can, but the co-location makes it more readable, more maintainable, and is a pretty good idea to do in my opinion, at least for anything that requires just fetching, whereas interactivity still relies on API routes, because it's mostly based on button presses that you can't really do in server components. I'd be super interested in hearing your opinion on the whole server component matter. Do you think there's a better solution? Do you think this is a good solution? After all, it's a great step in the direction of the holy grail of web development, where you have your front end, your back end, and kind of fuse it together even though that's not always what you want, mostly that's been the goal of frameworks like Next.js. Super interested in hearing what you think. That's gonna be it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.